Yeah, so let's dive into that a little bit more. They're they're coming off a very impressive showing against Colorado in the Alamo Bowl where they showed off a lot of that firepower that you talk about with James Washington, Mason Rudolph, really lighting up a secondary that was supposed to be one of the best in college football. So the offense is basically in place. Uh, you mentioned some issues on defense that need to be cleaned up in August. So your, your thoughts about a legitimate uh, run for Oklahoma State this year? Well, I think it all starts with the quarterback. And I know we say that about most teams, but Mason Rudolph, he seems to be a pro prospect uh, and definitely one of the top returning quarterbacks in the nation. And the nice thing at his disposal is just a bevy of wide receivers. And I'm looking at the stats here. Uh, Mike Gundy has talked about co- going back into this season with all these wide receivers that it could be like hockey line changes, the way that they just bring these guys on and off the field. Uh, Washington's obviously the top guy. Uh, then you've got Jalen McCleskey at the slot. Um, they're getting Marcel Aitman back. He missed last year. I believe he was a 1,000-yard receiver two years ago. Um, they've got a five-star recruit in Tyron Johnson who transferred from LSU. Uh, he should factor in. Chris Lacey is another guy had uh, 489 yards last year, and the list just goes on. And then all that does is open things up for uh, their young up and coming running back Justice Hill, who's actually who's actually a Tulsa based guy. Uh, he had over a thousand yards in his freshman year. So the offense is there. The defense is the question uh, for not only OSU but also OU, and we can get into that uh, in a minute. But uh, the offense, they're going to score the points. We'll see if they can kind of get over the hump uh, and hold the defense up just enough for Mason Rudolph and those guys. In just about every other Power 5 conference, there's a glut of teams that are difficult to get through. But for Oklahoma State, it looks as though, hey, they are the clear number two team. And uh, they they obviously had a shootout with Oklahoma and came up short uh, in the fourth quarter last year and were kind of manhandled more or less in the second half. But, um, you know, it's not like they've got three or four teams to get through. They seem to be clearly, not just for this season, but for the long haul, in absence of Texas getting better under Tom Herman, the clear number two team. So that college football playoff, I I know a lot of people are making them as the the chic pick to to get all the way to the Final Four. Yeah, Oklahoma State, that is. Oklahoma State, yes. Yeah. I, I, I don't think that there's anything wrong with having that idea right now. Um, especially when you compare OSU to OU. Last year, my first year in this area covering these two teams, I thought OSU was going to maybe pull off that Bedlam upset and it didn't happen and Baker Mayfield and OU had a big day. But with those weapons that I was just telling you about and the, the weapons that OU lost on offense through the draft, you have to think like Oklahoma State really has its best chance in a long time to kind of get over that hump. Even though Baker Mayfield is maybe going to be the best player uh, has a chance to be a Heisman candidate. Uh, just Rudolph does too, but Mayfield, uh, definitely a key guy to have back in the Big 12. 